Hello, everybody. My name is Tobin Clark. I'm a civil technical specialist with the ATG USA. We have uh, updates 24.2 and 24.1 for Civil 3D that's just been released. And I want to go through some of those, some of these uh, updates that have stood out to me. Um, and so hopefully you guys can update and uh, follow along and you know utilize some of these new tools that are constantly being introduced to the software. So I want to show you guys some of the cool moves, cool things that happened with the Project Explorer. So you can jump into any project with the Project Explorer and go into the Project Explorer. Sorry, you want to well in order to see what's new, you want to jump into a project with an alignment first, and then later we'll talk about subassemblies. But when you get into a project project with an alignment, there are a few updates that you might want to check out. So over here in the calculated stations. Um, Cate uh, alignment category. Um, you can scroll all the way to the right, and you can see that they added an alignment sub entity length entry. So, you know, the this calculated station um, section with Project Explorer shows specific station values at an offset along the alignment. So, for when you're you're along a curve, it's going to up. Uh, at, calculate new st calculated stations every five and when you're along a line it's going to calculate them every 10 but now you'll be able to see the align the total alignment length into this category so you can get an idea of um, how many calculated stations total there will be they there will be uh, and, you know that's going to show up in your tables as well so that's nice uh, it's going to give you a whole new entry on your table um, the next thing is that they updated was the ability to um, filter by a PI type. So when you're on this P alignment PIs uh, section of the uh, Project Explorer, you can um, use this now filter by PI type thing at the top. And if you have a whole lot of alignments on your, I mean, if you have a whole lot of PIs on your alignment, it's going to make it a lot easier to um, find the ones you're looking for. So, um, you know, if you are a big road designer, you might appreciate some of these changes. Uh, the last thing I want to show you guys is um, the ability to, when, you, when you're generating a report, um, let's just generate an alignment report. We have this edit table style or edit report style button. And now we're, we have a title row option. Whereas before we didn't. So if you edit, if you make reports from um, Project Explorer using the quick quick report feature, um, now there's a title row in the tables. Um, whereas before there wasn't. So you had to just kind of like guess at what the what the title of the of the of the thing, of the report that you generated was. You, I mean, based on what was in the table. And so that was that was kind of weird. Now you don't have to do that anymore, so that's cool. So I want to show you some of the extra updates that have been made to the subassembly section of the project of the tool space. These are pretty exciting. So in addition to those uh, Project Explorer updates, now you can um, So the, there was one. There's a change where you can make a new instance of a of a subassembly really easily from the Project Explorer. So you can just choose from the tool space. I mean, you can right click on a subassembly and choose create new. And just target one of those. So that's nice that you can do. And you can also swap out a subassembly. So if you have another PKT file somewhere, you can then um, swap that out. This is probably going to have some weird implications. <laughs> yeah, that's just an example of another PKT. Uh, and you can swap that out or swap back. Um, you can access a subassembly help menu from the tool space. So if you're trying to make edits to a subassembly, you can do that. But you can also access subassembly help. If you were if you were struggling to find that for some reason, and you know the subassembly help is going to help you identify some of these settings within the uh, assembly within the different subassemblies. So here are some dimensions A, B, C, D, E, F. But how do you know what those are? Well, you can know what those are by right clicking on in Toolspace now and going to subassembly help, and then you can see dimension A, B, C, D, 
all with definitions there. So I want to show you some of the updates that are made to the corridor transition workflow. So before we had this highlighting tool, which was nice, um, now we can actually just highlight all the corridor transitions in bulk, which is cool. So we'll leave that on for now, but it's recommended that you turn that off while you're actually working in this tool because it's a little bit harder to see the highlighted regions. Um, so that's, that's a nice update. Um, we have the ability to copy-paste um, corridor transitions. So for this, I'm going to kind of try to just delete one. I'm going to make this one a bit shorter. So this is going to be start station 11, end station 12, and then this is going to be station 1200 to station 1500. This is going to be end at station 15, oh, no, 1500 to station 1600. Okay, so this is a nice little kind of bus transit, bus lane, how I imagine it. Uh, we have an extra lane being added to the road, or not really an extra lane, there's only five feet. We can make it bigger. <laughs> um, Okay, then we can apply that. All right, so now we have what looks more like an extra lane. Um, and say we liked this bus lane transition and we wanted to add another one, we can copy the transition set and paste the transition set now. So that's a big one. Um, maybe I want to rename this to the bus stop, something else. But um, because this is locked, I can really easily offset it. So I can offset this new transition set to maybe Station 1700. Now everything's going to be offset with it. Um, and I can apply and see my new bus lane added at the north there. So that's all very nice. There's actually support now for transition sets across gaps in a corridor. So sometimes you might add a if I select this corridor, you'll see if I zoom in here, there's a gap where there's no, where the two regions are touching. Sometimes you might add a gap at, a re, at two regions, or um, between regions, if you are having issues with, a, with, edit, with additional sections being cut at that location. So if you add a gap there, uh, you'll, you can prevent that from happening. Um, the... Yeah, and so you know the ability to copy paste transitions is really nice. We can right click over here and show transitions. I think I said this already, but just in case I didn't, you can show transitions and highlight those. So those are all the updates to the uh, corridor transition workflow. All right, so first of all, there's a bit of a disclaimer here. The video while I was in production, 2024.3 came out while I was working on an update about 2024.2. So uh, there's a little add-on here. I'm going to talk about the update to the corridor creation dialog. So if I click the corridor creation dialog, I can add multiple assemblies within this new dialog. Um, see, I can target another alignment um, like that. And I could add a feature line at the same time. I can add another alignment if I wanted to. And uh, you can uh, target your alignments, so you can set multiple alignments at the same time, whereas you couldn't do this before. I need to hold shift the entire the entire time. So I'll choose essential. And now I've targeted both of those alignments to that um, to that assembly. Um, and uh, so yeah, that's what that does. Um, it's kind of a simple update, but I wanted to make sure that was in the video because this is going to be pretty jarring for people who are doing corridors. You can filter now. You couldn't filter before. You can you can assign multiple assemblies at the same time, whereas you couldn't do that before. You need to hold shift while you do that. And uh, you can also set code set styles in this uh, in this dialog. So this is a pretty neat, pretty fundamental part of Civil 3D. So um, thanks for watching. I'll get back to the video. So uh, I'm going to show you the updates that were made to the gravity pipes now, 2024.1. So um, 
you can now add gravity pipes from another network to to your network. So if I hover over this network, this pipe here, you'll see that it says network one, and uh, and that's the network that one's in, and this one's in storm. So they're in two different networks. I can now kind of connect them for better or worse. So this uh, may confuse some of you, but now it's an availability, and you can see it pulled my my uh, pipe down into no man's land because uh, yeah, its invert is at minus 4.75. So I could have done some more to fix that pipe invert. I guess I can do that now. The next thing I want to show you is that you can add pressure pipe data to structures and to, to, to data bands uh, for structures. So all the information you could include in um, in your gravity plan network labels or your profile labels using the uh, label tool like this, you can now add that information into your bands. So that means you can label pressure networks here. You can label these, these pipes that are connecting from other gravity networks. And so there is a, there's some more use for these bands now, and I hopefully you guys take advantage of that. The next thing I want to show you is that, well, I just like to point out that you can now move the gravity, the, the pressure networks. So this is a pressure network. If I move it, it used to get disconnected from the um, from the from the from its alignment, and it would stop being a connected pipe run. It would just be a a, a part based pressure network. But now it stays as a pipe as a pipe run. So that's exciting. If you're using those move and rotate commands, you can you can well if you were using that, it would break your pipe run. So now it doesn't. So. Um, now there are warning messages, and there are, it's just going to be a lot harder for you to break your pipe runs, which you guys will appreciate. Um, okay, so now we can go back over to the data bands. You noticed I had some data bands for my for my water network, so you can see my water network. This is a structure. You can come down, and you can see I have this station and northing and easting called out. <clears throat> um, so you can now call out these connected parts parts, um, these connected part elevations, invert elevations, on your structures, whereas before you had to do it, you, the only way to do that was on the on the pressure pipes. So um, yeah, if you like this more, better, it's now an option for you, and you can utilize more structure label type band, structure band, structure label bands in the, in the bands. Um, you can also see that uh, I have some, some staggering. If, so I'll, I'll, I'll enable that if I go to um, <clears throat> profile view properties. You can come over here and see there's a setting for staggering now. So if I turn that off, it's going to look really bad. <laughs> um, so you have the option now to include staggering or just stagger to the left or the right. But <clears throat> It's going to allow you to actually use these bands a little bit more efficiently and um, have something that you can print. And if you don't like labeling things on the, on the profile or you just want to you know, be redundant, um, you know, this is automated, so it can, be, it can save you a lot of time. So, uh, of course, I encourage you to test some of this stuff out. Um, so that is all that I have for you with pipe and pressure runs. Um, and... I believe that's all I have in general. So I appreciate everybody's time watching my video. Uh, hope you, hopefully you got a lot out of it. Thank you. Hey there, thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of the other content on our channel.